process or a means of a transaction tool in a classical economic sense, right? Is that? I mean, that's, uh, of course, one, one would need to add much more detail, uh, but in the paper, um, I think there, the, the term money in this literature is used in many different senses. So there is a broad uh, meaning of money, a uh, right. narrow meaning of money. And uh, I uh, just say, uh, I, for me, money in the sense how I uh, want to understand it in this paper, this is also what money is today, in a sense. And that means in the, histo in the historical part, uh, the emergence of coins is central. So I don't talk about uh, any sort of uh, commodity money uh, uh, used in, in many, in all traditional societies, yeah, just to, to, to conduct some gift exchange. <coughs> and this, what uh, anthropologists say, there's a huge literature about this. Yeah? So, but, but I think this is, uh, uh, I mean, money in this, uh, what, in the sense of this paper, the, the, also the, the continuity to, to, to modern money is precisely the emergence of the coins. Yeah, mm, and so uh, mm, uh, this one thing. And the other thing is, uh, indeed, uh, uh, but I think you al already emphasized this, uh, if you look at the early uses of money, even the broad sense, it is intermingled. Yeah? You have transactional uses, but uh, uh, many, many uses, or most uses, more are more related to gift exchange, uh, 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 establishing friendship relations or authority relations. And this is also how I read the recent surveys. Yeah, of, uh, I quote uh, some surveys on history of money. Uh, that at least it is uh, uh, mixed, but uh, it seems that the, the, the social uses are dominant. Yeah, and so the, in the sense of neutralization of money is a process that then slowly happened. But the interesting thing is, even in this case of the emergence of the coins, which then were used for transactions, simultaneously, if you look at the, the uh, um, uh, Greek, uh, uh, the ancient uh, myths and myth uh, mythology, Simultaneously, uh, those stories emerged about, uh, and also the social institution of tyranny emerged, accumulation of money. I, I mean, that was an interesting transition. I mean, precisely when the coins enabled the people to neutralize money use in, in the sense of just trading, yeah? that was, in a sense, also the innovation to neutralize simultaneously this other thing happened, that these coins uh, yeah, obtained the role of, uh, yeah, of a drug. And uh, yeah, for the Greek tyrants. Uh, and then they were also immediately um, reintegrated into the existing power structures. Because uh, minting evolved into uh, you know, this uh, custom to... to uh, show the face of uh, an emperor or some holy uh, symbol and so forth. I mean, yeah, so the, the two processes happen simultaneously. The, 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 the strengthening of the transactional rule of money, yes, but simultaneously uh, the reintegration of money into uh, established uh, political and religious um, institutions and ideologies. So. No. Yeah, tax payment. I mean, per, I mean, tax pay, payment of tax by uh, coins, uh, yeah. political means of a political exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I spoke uh, too much. Uh, please uh, raise uh, any questions. <laughs> it's a uh, really grand story. So, one, one more, one yeah, more question. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I have been wondering if your theory can be applied to uh, the theory of language. Uh, maybe you said uh, 
money is a very good example uh, for uh, for uh, generalized governance, mm. and maybe the best example. Yeah, 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 maybe best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, I wonder if uh, your theory can explain the emergence of uh, language. Um, you don't need to ask me for this because there is a whole literature about this. Uh, in a sense, um, um, uh, um, for example, there is uh, the, the American philosopher Ruth Millikan. Millikan is uh, uh, one of uh, the um, protagonists in the so called Tilio semantic school. Uh, in philosophy of language. And uh, she and others argue that one can give a biological explanation to language and how language emerged. And actually, this was an inspiration for me. This is a background literature. In the sense, it works the other way around. That is why I said, don't ask me. Uh, you know, uh, there is already. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, th I, don't, I, I don't have a full uh, overview here. But, uh, uh, the point is, in, in the, in the, in the uh, philosophy of language, there is now a, a strong uh, yeah, a school of thought. One representative is Millikan, uh, who argue that meaning can be yeah, reduced to function. So very, very simple. This is why they call it teleosemantics. Yeah, teleo in the sense of uh, goal. Yeah, goal-directed goal behavior, till the goal, goal-directed behavior, and and they argue that uh, in that sense uh, one can give an evolutionary explanation of the emergence of language, and then we have the same story. It is actually also a transfer because uh, uh, they don't concentrate on syntax, semantics, or the advanced forms of language analysis. They want to understand the primor primordial mechanisms. And this is just to use words as things, yeah? to, 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 to send a word. And this is why I said the word as a physical uh, um, uh, entity. Yeah? To, you, you send this like a thing. I send a word to you, and I want to cause something. And if I succeed, I may continue. And then you have the evolutionary story. So it's precisely what you said. Yeah, um, this is uh, Papineau, Millikan, other different researchers who think in this way. And therefore, uh, it is, uh, uh, this also matches the Searle approach, because Searle says, yeah, what is, I mean, what is the framework of institutions? Language. I mean, this metaphor and so forth, all this is language-based. Uh, in the, in the sense, language is a fundamental institution. Without language, uh, all the other things don't work. But then, you don't commit, don't have to commit the mistake then to treat language as a mental phenomenon. But language itself must be approached from the naturalistic point of view. And this is precisely this uh, school of thought in uh, philosophy of language. Just a question. Uh, um, let's say, uh, in this case, uh, output means uh, some kind of action, right? Mm -hmm. But then, uh, uh, 